Oh, I just want to. It's a pleasure for me to, to welcome you all in our seminar. Rosa Luxemburg Foundation is the political foundation of the German left. We are not dependent uh, by the party, but uh, we are near to the party. And it's important to remark that the freedom of movement is one of the founding principles of the EU. Derogation, therefore, must be interpreted strictly. And this is what has happened in the jurisprudence of the court in, the, in this year. All states must recognize, must recognize that free movement of Roma is a fundamental right, not a mercy. And uh, the directive 2004-38 must put into concrete action in all member states, in all member states, and the Commission have to control it. Uh, we need uh, on, um, an, a European action plan against uh, anti-Siganism. The member states must create measures to improve the living conditions, uh, especially um, on local level. Roma have been among the biggest losers in the transition from communism since 1989. They were often the first to lose their jobs in the early 90s and they have been persistently blocked from re-entering the labor force due to often inadequate skills but also pervas uh, pervasive discrimination. If we look at the two major I think, issues in, for the Roma today, on one side we have poverty or social exclusion, where we don't go. on the other side you've got anti gypsies the link between these two phenomena has very, I think, has been not really thought through enough. When we talk about anti gypsyism we are not talking about fringe right-wing movement, we are not talking about extreme rights, violence, but we are talking about, according to the Eurobarometer, of a sentiment, as feeling spread in a large part of the European population. If we look at the Holocaust as not an exception in European modern history, but at the end of a chain of events which brought, produced it, and then Bauman says, if you look at the Euros as an exception, then basically in a way you are justifying all the rest around it. But the Roma have not only been persecuted and killed in uh, 50 years ago, but the history of persecution is much longer. Uh, to understand the contemporary spread of anti-Gypsism in neoliberal Europe and the link between the racial criminalization of the Roma and discriminatory policy and practice, we should be in mind that any gypsyism is not, that today gypsyism, anti-gypsyism is not a new phenomenon. If um, a Roma applies for a residence permit, um, a member state cannot ask them to produce uh, the necessary documents before the permit is given, since it is imp it's, it's possible also to do that, uh, to give the permit first and then verify afterwards that the uh, documents, the required documents, uh, are provided. So, uh, part-time employment, one-third uh, of a full-time job, for example, is, is completely sufficient to uh, give residence rights in another member state. Uh, the only type of activity which can be excluded, which will not give a citizen resident rights in another member state, is completely marginal or incidental uh, activity, or of course, fictitious activity. Since they have been resident in the member state, uh, they uh, are considered, they must be considered as still having residence uh, rights, and as residents, then of course, they uh, cannot be discriminated against on the basis of nationality. They must have the right to equal treatment. It's very difficult also in the member states to avoid the confusion between someone who has a professional activity and someone who doesn't, as far as the Roma are concerned, because they are seen as having little or nothing to live on, little or no income. So even those who have a very limited self-employed uh, activity, professional activity, I mentioned selling papers on the street, uh, most national authorities and national courts, in France at least, will apply the sufficient income condition to them as well. Economic reasons cannot justify the expulsion. 
and expulsion. And so uh, my conclusion is that migratory birds are in fact better protected than uh, citizens in, uh, in, in France by the courts. So I do suggest that uh, the national judges receive training uh, in uh, European, court, uh, European uh, law, including on free movement, which is often the completely forgotten aspect of European law. There have been a lot of debates around whether or not the European Union is the right institution to lead the way in promoting Roma rights. And at the moment, the Commission simply doesn't have the legal competences that it would need think, in order to really enforce Roma rights or Roma protection in so many ways. The complexity of the exclusion of Roma is so much more than any other group. Um, what the Commission could do, so I want to thank you positively, they could monitor more, they could evaluate better, they could pay attention, they could listen to the people who work with the Roma and listen and find out what works, they could share best practice, acknowledging that there is no one-size-fits-all solution, so even if something works with schools in the Czech Republic, that might not necessarily work with communities in Romania or in England or in France. <coughs> Because at some point we need to have a conversation about whether Roma should be, want to be, and have we asked them, whether actually they want to be integrated into a society. Poor Roma became the most visible ones in, in, in Europe, and that's why uh, poverty became synonymous with, uh, with uh, uh, Roma. Nu există suficientă voință politică, nu există suficientă deschidere a autorităților locale, centrale, față de problemele romilor. Cred că și cunoașteți foarte bine că în We often hear in Romania at least the fact that oh, you're an exception because you're not like the rest of them, you're educated or whatever, you know. And that's the biggest threat because by classifying that person as an exception, you reinforce the stereotype. And we have hundreds of thousands uh, of Roma people who are well integrated and well educated in Romanian society. And that is the force that we need to bring into this action and that we do not bring into this discussion. Those people are also Roma. And those people should also be uh, uh, considered part of this society. I'm not saying that the other people who are also Roma are not part of the society or they should not be appreciated as part of the society because what we learned and what is the important message in these camps is that these are not criminal camps like Sarkozy is trying to and, and, and all these other crazy guys are trying to, 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 to put forward this idea. These are not criminal camps and I stress that again. We have visited tens and tens of camps, maybe some of you perhaps know this even better than we do, and I stress again, these are not criminal camps. These are camps where people work, these are camps where some of them work perhaps without legal papers, these are camps where some of them do grey economy, and yes, some of them do illegal things, but so that so happens in, in, I don't know, in any city, in any human, in any human settlement. So to push forward the idea that these are criminal camps is a 21st century Nazi discourse. The directives are European laws which are to be transferred into national laws. And the national laws in all of our countries 
they are the restrictive uh, um, laws. The court decisions go directly to the national and, and respective uh, courts in the, in, in the, in the EU countries. So, uh, we can't count on the directives if we have not a clear uh, say on what is going on on the national levels. The promotion of Roma is part of a war on poverty, but there is a specific ethnic anti-Ziganism. There is a specific racism against Roma. We try to improve the cooperation between different levels and different institutions and bodies. As there was mentioned, the OSCE, the European Council and the EU, as there was mentioned, the Roma is associations and the associations uh, on the local and regional levels.